We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. Tonight, we've got a topic from our honorary Tabletop Bellhop patron and now published author, Sean Hamilton. Not Sean from Hamilton, which is me, and it sounds weird when I say it. Yeah. Now, Sean asks, what would you recommend as a next step up from Ticket to Ride, insofar as train-themed games? Got someone I know who's super into trains, so looking for potential surprises. Well, thanks so much for the question, Sean. All right, before we get into game recommendations, I do want to discuss one thing. Sean is looking for next step train games from Ticket to Ride. And to properly give suggestions, we need to know what games are considered train games. Well, this episode is actually part two in a series of podcasts where we're talking train games. And I encourage everyone who's interested in deep diving this and figuring out what people mean by train game, check out last week's episode. That's episode 131, Train Spotting. Or at least check out the AMA, or sorry, at the AMA, the Ask the Bellhop segment from that show over on YouTube. Like we really dive, dive into the topic and look at it from another different angles, as well as questioning people on social media and get as many definitions as we can, and eventually settle on a single definition, which is what we'll be using tonight. For those who haven't had a chance to check out that episode, the final answer for us was... Any game that includes trains, specifically locomotive-style trains, in a meaningful way. Most of these games include mechanics like route building, pick up and deliver, a stock-based economy, contracts to be filled, and or upgrading your tracks and engines. Mm -hmm. Note, most, a given train game may or may not have all of these, as long as it uses trains in some way that's actually important to the game. All right, now that we got that out of the way, it did take a full episode to get there. Uh, let's try to find some great Next Step train games for one of the world's most popular train games and most popular board games, Ticket to Ride. Now, what I'd like to do here is something we did for Settlers of Catan almost two years ago to this day, which I thought was pretty ironic when I looked up the old article, where we talked about games with a similar feel to Catan. So what we did then was take different aspects of Catan that people enjoy and use that to recommend games based on those. For Ticket to Ride, those aspects include things like just playing games and socializing, route building, owning stocks and companies, card-driven mechanics, set collection, and more. As usual, this list is presented in no particular order. Now, my first suggestion, and I end up doing the same thing with Catan, and I don't mean it as a cop-out, is for people who just love Ticket to Ride. Like, I love Ticket to Ride. It's my favorite game. It's a fantastic game. I'm looking for more Ticket to Ride. Well, for that, my strongest suggestion is just that, more Ticket to Ride. Pick up a different version of Ticket to Ride. There are a number of different versions of Ticket to Ride out there, and mm -hmm. many of the later sets have introduced new rules and complexity to the game. Even the first big Ticket to Ride follow-up, Ticket to Ride Europe adds a push your luck element and a way to score your opponent's routes by using stations. So my first recommendation out of the night and that I specifically want to call out is an expansion for Ticket to Ride. So you will need to own Ticket to Ride or Ticket to Ride Europe. It works with both. And this is the Map Collection Volume 5, United Kingdom and Pennsylvania. This expansion features two new ways to play on two new maps that include a number of those train game elements we just mentioned and that we talked about last week that aren't in Basic Ticket to Ride. Now, UK being the first side has a totally new set of train cards and introduces technology cards, which allows player to improve the quality of their trains by discarding engines, which are the wild cards, which allow for faster and longer routes on the map. Now, Pennsylvania uses a deck of stock shares representing actual historical railroads from the 1800s. When player completes a route, they have the option, invest in the company with control of each company giving bonus points at the end of the game. Now, you don't have to invest, but you can. And I've got to say, that sounds a lot like an 18xx game right there. So our first suggestion for a next step from Ticket to Ride is more Ticket to Ride. <laughs> with the Map Collection Volume 5, United Kingdom and Pennsylvania. Now, my next Ticket to Ride suggestion is a standalone game and is not an expansion, and that's Ticket to Ride Marklin. This is another heavier version of Ticket to Ride, allowing players to not only travel from city to city, but from cities to countries. 
Now, along with this, there's a pick up and deliver mechanic where each player gets three passengers that can be used to pick up market tokens from the cities on the maps. On a player's turn, instead of drawing cards or placing trains, they can move their passengers. Moving your passenger on your own trains is free, but if you use another player's routes, you need to pay them. And that was Ticket to Ride Marklin. Now, if your group's favorite part of Ticket to Ride is just getting together and mm -hmm. socializing while playing a game, you probably want to stick to lighter games where you can still sit and chat while playing. Games we dig that fit that category include... First up, I have Yardmaster. This is a card game where players are attempting to build the highest valued freight trains by adding rail cars to their existing train yard. Now, when adding cars to your trains, you can only connect cars of the same value or the same good type. Now, the value is represented by a number and these good types represented by color. Now, similar to like Race for the Galaxy, paying for rail cars costs cards out of your hand. So a big part of the game is trying to decide what cards to use for currency and what to play and what you want in your train yard. Now, taking a step back, there is an even lighter and shorter version of this game called Yardmaster Express. And this I actually recommend more so as a next step. I actually recommend pick this up. And if you like that, then move on to Yardmaster. This takes the basics of Yardmaster with similar rules for building your trains, but turns into a drafting game like Seven Wonders of Sunshi Go. You start your hand with five cards. You put one down in your train yard. You pass your cards to the left. Very similar to that. Now, Yardmaster takes about half an hour. Express can be played under 10 minutes. And that was Yardmaster and or Yardmaster Express. Now, another light game with the train theme is Railroad Inc. This is a roll and write game where players are trying to build both rail and road pathways on a gridded map based on what comes up on a set of custom dice. Now, my favorite part of this game is the fact that everyone is building based on the exact same rolls every round. Yet, by the end of the game, everyone's completed city will look completely different. Note, this game does come in a number of variations. I think they're up to four different ones now. And each of which comes with two unique dice with optional rules. For example, Railroad Inc. Blue comes with blue dice that depict rivers and lakes, whereas Red is going, I don't know, post-apocalyptic or something because you've got dice with lava and meteors. And that was Railroad Inc. Now, if what your group likes about Ticket to Ride is building the train routes themselves, there are a number of great train games that focus specifically on route building. Transamerica is the lightest game on this list and actually is considered by many to be lighter than Ticket to Ride. So in a way, it's not necessarily a step up, more of a step sideways at best, but it is purely about route building and unconstrained route building. The routes aren't on the map. You just have a bunch of points on the map and you get to build wherever you want. Now, this also could have been placed on the list of games for groups that are more about socializing because this is such a dead simple game. Transamerica, each player starts with five cities on the map and the winner is the first player to connect all five of their cities through anyone's routes, not just your own. Each turn, you have two options and two options only. Place a track or place two tracks. That's it. The key to winning is figuring out how to most take advantage of the rails of your opponents without giving them too much of an advantage using your rails. And that was Transamerica. For something heavier than Transamerica, but still on the lighter side of things, take a look at San Francisco Cable Car often just called Cable Car, and it was also once released as a game called Metro. All of those are the same game. This one is going to appeal to Suro fans. In this game, you control a cable car company with a number of different cars running around the city, and they actually all start on the edge of the board. And your goal is to build the longest possible route for every car using tiles. And these are the type of tiles that Suro has where every tile has two exits on the four sides, and then the rails combination going off one onto the other, and it's every possible combination of that. I know there's a word for this type of tile, but I Googled it and I couldn't figure it out. But there is a tile for type tile type for this so it's that you're putting down tracks you then your rail cars move along the tracks but unlike so you don't actually move them until the end to kind of trace the pathway you don't actually keep your trains on them now the most interesting tier here that completely diverts from Suro and makes it a stronger game and it's also different from most train games where you have to stick your own route here you can place those track tiles anywhere you want you don't have to build off your own track this adds a big take that element to the game because you can play on your opponent's cars, basically. 
Now, Cable Car also includes an advanced mode where players don't actually have a company of their own or a color of their own, rather can invest in stocks in each of the different colors in play. This turns Cable in Car into an almost light 18xx game, though I do recommend playing the original a number of times before stepping up to that. And that was Cable Car or Metro. Now, if you not only like building routes, but building specific routes to match ticket cards in Ticket to Ride, take a look at these. So 20th Century Limited is often considered by many the, the evolution, the next step from Transamerica. It takes the basic mechanics of route building and adds more to it. Players are going to be setting up small railroads, turning them into larger rail lines, and then selling them off to the big train companies and starting over again. And what's neat about this is while players are working on their own little independent rails, there's a card deck that represents the two big rail lines of uh, America at the time period and how they advance along. And if they touch your route, they, they take it over. With this, there's a set of demand cards that work very much like the route cards in Ticket to Ride. And what they show is cities that need to be connected. And if you're able to complete them, you get additional points. So that's a lot of similarities to Ticket to Ride's um, ticket system. So, and that was 20th Century Limited. Now, sticking with the theme of cards, if you dig the card-driven mechanics of Ticket to Ride, along with a bit of route building, take a look at Trains. This is a deck-building game that was released shortly after Dominion. It is very similar to Dominion, including the static market and the, the money cards. Like They're not coins, but like the very similar mechanics. But it adds one big thing that I, what makes this go on this list is a board. And some of the actions you'll be able to take with some of the cards will involve placing cubes on the board, which represent train routes. And you're going to score points based on getting these routes to connect to cities on the board. And that was trains now if you like the set collection element so collecting sets of matching car train cards to build routes if you really love that gin or rummies type aspect of ticket to ride i highly recommend checking out spike because how you place rails in spike is almost identical to ticket to ride except the board's open you can build any direction and your color is what color track you can build on. And each of the five different compass points you can build off of are represented by a different color. So if you want to go up, then left, you might need a red, then a blue card. So you're still trying to get sets of cards to make connections. Now, Spike also adds a very simple market mechanic. There are only four different types of goods. And when you deliver a good to a city, it just bumps to the lowest value. And then they just shuffle over. Like it's a really, really simple mechanic, but it does reward players for delivering different goods. This is honestly my strongest suggestion for people who are like, oh, I don't know what I like about the throw. I like collecting the cards. I like the route building. I just kind of generally like it. This is some that, but more to me, this is, is honestly the next step from ticket to ride the open routes and simple economy. Just to me, cinch it as, as one of the strongest suggestions on this list. And that was spike. Next, I want to suggest a bit more of a step up. This is, a, this is possibly taking an elevator to the next floor. And that is my personal favorite route building train games that I personally discovered with the game Steam from Martin Wallace. Now, also in the same category, same style of game, are Railroad Tycoon, Age of Steam, and Railways of the World. Now, the reason for all these variants is due to some dispute over who owns the rights for the games and the particular engine, and there's there's some legal mess there that it, that's from what I understand is all now cleaned up. But these are some of my favorites, and my personal favorite is Steam Rails to Riches by Martin Wallace. These are route building games that also feature a detailed economy featuring auctions and the ability to take loans and a strong pick up and deliver element. Other aspects include improving your locomotives, upgrading cities, and introducing more goods to the market. The Steam game uses an action selection mechanism as well. So all of this made me wonder if maybe this is a bit too much, right? Like th this is, I, I, it's, it's a big step, right? Like I said, but I decided to include this because when I think of train games, I kind of think of a scale that starts at Transamerica, maybe Twick to Ride a Step Up, and goes to the 18xx games. And yes, I realize 18xx games has its own scale built in. But when I think of that, and I try to think of what's right in the middle, what, what is the medium, what's the middle train game that, that that's fairly easy and not too complicated, but still has quite a bit of white weight to it, that's where Steam falls in for me. 
Note Steam is slightly simpler than Age of Steam, which is slightly simpler than Railways of the World. So Steam to me is just that perfect middle. So that's why I wanted to include it in the list. I do strongly recommend this isn't the game you break out with uh, with grandma and the kids who are used to playing Ticket to Ride. But if you've got a gaming group that's in like Catan, Carcassonne, Ticket to Ride, and are used to a bit more broader gaming experience, I don't think you can go wrong with Steam. And that was Steam and other games based on the early railway series by Martin Wallace that started with Lancashire Railways. Now, one of the things that most train gamers find is missing from Ticket to Ride is any form of economy or stocks, at least in the base game. While I personally feel those aspects are there just to an abstracted level that people don't recognize them, check out our mm -hmm. last episode for more talk on that. These games feature a stock market-based economy prominently. So the most basic stock market trading game I've ever played is Paris Connection. This game is actually really simple to teach and play and is lightning fast. The first time I broke it out, I think we played 11 times in a row. Players each start with a number of random stocks, which are represented by locomotive meeple. And you hide them behind a screen so you don't know who has stock and what. The remaining locomotives are placed on stock cards for the six different companies. Each turn, players place one to five locomotives from a company that's already out there onto the board building that route. And doing that, they're going to increase the value of that company. Or they can trade one of their locomotives in the back with a company that's out there changing up your portfolio. Now, when cities are connected by a completed route and a color, the value of the company goes up. Now, if you think any train game with stocks is too complicated, just give Paris Connection a shot, and I am certain it will change your mind. And that was Paris Connection. Next, I have another winsome game published by Queen, same as Paris Connection, that's a great step up from Paris Connection, and that is Chicago Express. I think of this game as the ultimate gateway to 18xx style train games. It manages to build in most of the major elements of 18xx into a simplified system that plays in under an hour. You've got the auctioning of shares, the expanding of rail systems of any company, developing cities, and even the paying of dividends. Though that's not player driven, it's based on how many actions are taken each round. This is a really brilliant game that was the game that convinced me hey, maybe I might be interested in diving into a heavier world of rail games. Once you've mastered Chicago Express, look to German Railways, another winsome game from Queen that's another step up mm -hmm. where each different rail line has a special characteristic based on the actual history of those rail companies. And that was Chicago Express and German Railways. Now, lightening things up a bit and stepping away from the winsome early train games and 18xx routes, I've got Whistle Stop. This is a rather unique tile lane game where you are trying to get your trains from one side of the board to the other, east to west. And along the way, you're going to pick up and deliver cargo to small towns. And when you do that, you have the ability to gain shares in other railroads. Or you can hold on to your goods, which will give you a huge payout if you make it all the way to the West Coast with those goods. Now, some stops along the route will provide whistles, which is where the whistle stop name comes in, which will give you special moves and abilities. One thing to watch during this game, though, is make sure you don't run out of coal. While lighter than the Steam games and some of the Winsome games, Whistle Stop manages to cram in a lot of the train game themes into what seems like a simple tile lane game. This is a game where you're going to have a handful of hexes and you're going to put over a map and your train's going to follow the route you build. This is one I think you have to play at least twice to really get what's going on, but you're going to get the basic mechanics the first time you play. It's pretty simple. Play a tile, move your thing. If your train moves through something, get something for it. That part works, but knowing what you want to get and when is the part where I think you're going to need to play twice to get that learning curve. And that was Whistle Stop. Now, next up, we've got two recommendations that don't really fit neatly because of how different they are. Really, the only thing similar to Ticket to Ride here is that the game features trains. Mm -hmm. But both of these are fairly light, family-friendly games that should appeal to fans of Ticket to Ride. Up first, I've got Colt Express. Now, I got to say, this is the one people could argue really isn't a train game, and I wouldn't have much defense here. 
Despite being about a train heist, the train is more of a backdrop and setting for the game, though it does feature a very cool two-level train that's the main playing board, and there are a couple train long train aspects, like you randomly determine how long each leg of the train run is, and that determines how many actions you get, and there's actually parts, because you're playing cards, where you're in, your train's in a tunnel, and you have to play your cards face down, so no one knows what you're doing, so there are some train elements there, but I, I if someone pushed that this wasn't a train game, I, I wouldn't fight back too hard. Now, in Colt Express, you are playing train robbers in the Old West, where you're using programmed movement to move around the train cards, including climbing up on the roofs, shoot and brawl with your opponents, and try to get to the end of the line with the most cash. That was Colt Express. Finally, I've got Rail Pass, which is one of the most unique train games I've ever played. Now, I'm going to be talking about this one in detail when we get to the review segment later on in the show. This is a pickup and deliver train game where you actually load up plastic trains with cargo cubes, pick them up, and hand them to the other players. This comes in the form of a real-time cooperative semi-dexterity game where players have 10 minutes or less to get cubes from one city to the city matching their color. I found this entire concept to be completely fascinating, and I just had to try this game out for myself. And now that I played it, I now strongly recommend any train game fan at least check this game out. And that was Rail Pass. So that's all the next step train games we can recommend based on games owned and played ourselves. Now next we have a handful of games that come strongly recommended by other people. Discovered while doing research for this topic, but again, we haven't played these ourselves. So first up is a game I really want to try myself called On the Underground. This is a game all about building a different type of train, the subway system in London, England. This is mainly a route building game where players control two to four different lines and will get points for not only connecting their lines to stations and terminuses, but also for having passenger use their rails. And where the passengers choose to go every round is determined by a random card deck. And that was On the Underground. Ticket to Ride was designed by Alan R. Moon, and the game he was most famous for before Ticket to Ride was Union Pacific. Now, this is a train-themed stock market game where each round, players decide if they want to expand a company by building routes and adding a stock of that company to their hand, or paying a stock from their hand to the table to increase their ownership of the company. Players have paid dividends on their stocks at semi-random scoring events. Now, I found a number of people strongly recommending checking this out if you're a Ticket to Ride fan. Though personally, taking a look at it on Board Game Geek, it looks a little dated to me. I personally think you might be better off with some of the more modern games we mentioned earlier. Now, interestingly, Alan rethemed and re-released Union Pacific with some updated rules as Airlines Europe which is a non-train game, but I always see people saying, oh, if you like Ticket to Ride, a next step game is Airlines Europe. So I actually think that's probably a better next step game than Union Pacific. So that was Union Pacific and possibly Airline Europe. The other suggestion I saw on every next step train game list, and to be honest, every train game list out there, this listing talking about train games in any way, is the Crayon Rail series of games that all started with Empire Builder from Mayfair Games. Now, I'm ashamed to say I own a copy of this venerable game. Uh, it was my dad's, and I've not actually, never actually sat down to learn to play it or tried any other Crayon Rail games, to be honest. Even though I, they've been out at events, like I've had the chance one of the local gamers loves Martian Rails. Uh, this is something I really probably should rectify at some point. Uh, but despite being an older series of train games, they still seem to have a ton of fans. Well, that was Empire Builder and the various Crayon Rail games. Finally, I have a game that I actually do own that I got for my birthday in January, but unfortunately haven't gotten to play because it requires a minimum of three players. That is Irish Gage. Now, this is the first game in a new Iron Rail series from Capstone Games, though it is actually a reprint of an older, again, Winsome Games. Winsome seems to make a lot of these, these simpler, dialed-down 18xx-style games. This seems like a great step up the Ticket to Ride stairs if you're heading towards 18xx games. Uh, this came out the exact same time as Chicago Express and Paris Connection and German Railways and has a lot of similarities to those. It features most of the 18 aspects without actual track building. 
So if you have a train on a hack hex, you have a track. It features share auctions, track building, upgrading towns, and players calling for dividends whenever they want. I am really looking forward to get to play this one. There is a ton of hype out this. When this was released, it kind of took the uh, the podcasters by storm. Like not even just the train gamers. Everyone seemed to love this one. So as soon as the stay at home order is done, hopefully I can get this one to the table and share more of my thoughts on it. And that was Irish Gage. All right, that's it. That's enough of them. There's all my train games recommendations, but don't leave yet. So we know Sean is specifically looking for next step train games, Mm -hmm. but it seemed worthwhile to highlight a few games that are excellent next step games from Ticket to Ride, but that aren't actually train games in any way. So the first one of these is a game called Sync Tear. This is the game when everyone says, tell me about a hidden gen game no one's heard of that you love. It's always Sync Tear. This is the first thing that comes to my mind. This is a pickup and deliver game that features card drafting and contract filling mechanics that are very similar to Ticket to Ride. In Sync Tear, you're driving your cart around the five cities and the surrounding farms of Liguria, Italy, collecting produce and delivering it to those cities to earn points. In addition, though, you're trying to complete produce order cards, which require you to deliver specific fruits to specific cities. There's also a neat... I, economic element here that changes the value of each good between every game for what's and what's wanted at each city using a bunch of six-sided dice that you roll and all it is is if it's a six on the die they pay you six coins for that good if it's a one on the die they pay you one now if it weren't for the train game restriction to sean's question this would have beat out spike this would have been my number one recommendation it's still my number one recommendation of a next step game to ticket to ride but it doesn't have that train out and that was Sink Tail. Next, I have Thurn in Taxis, where you are building post office routes in Bavaria in the surrounding area. Now, this has a ton of train game trappings, but is set far back in history that there weren't any trains. There is no Age of Rail. Now, similar to Ticket to Ride, you're going to draft cards, you're going to attempt to collect sets and form routes of at least three connecting cities. When a set's played, instead of playing down individual trains, you're going to build post offices in those cities along the route. Along with this, there's bonus tiles for having post offices in all the spots in a region, the ability to upgrade your carriages to complete longer routes, and other train game elements. This is actually one of Deanna's favorite games of all time. And that was Thrun and Taxis. Another really interesting root building game that I own is great for people who love to cut other people off in Tick to Tride. So if your favorite part is cutting off someone else's route, check out Through the Desert. In this game, players are building routes with their candy-colored camels, attempting to close off areas of the hex-based board. Now, this is a lighter abstract game that could have easily been a train game. Though I guess it really is a train of camels you're building. And that was Through the Desert. Finally, I don't think I could have completed this topic without mentioning one of the, I almost the, the elephant in the room, and that is Power Grid. While I know a lot of people are intimidated by this game, it is not that hard to learn. This was actually one of the first games I discovered when I first discovered Euro games. I've been playing Games Workshop games for years. I've been a hobby gamer for years. But the, 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 the Euro games, the Catans, the Carcassons, and I was able to learn this without any other experience. I think at that point, I had literally played Catan and Carcassonne, and that's it. That was all I had for it. Uh, the math in this game, everyone's scared of it. Everyone calls it math the game. Ignore that. It's just money math. It, it's paying for auctions and adding up the cost of routes and paying it out of your money. Like it, it, and you use paper money, unless you've replaced it with something cooler. Uh, the route building aspects of power, power grid are very train-like, and that's because they are completely based off the Crayon Rain system from Empire Builder. Uh, the Friedman Fries, the designer, admitted it. The original prototypes of Power Grid even had you using crayons to draw on the board to build your network. Now, due to this, many hardcore train game fans consider Power Grid a train game, despite the fact there's no trains in it. Now, I say Power Grid's one of my favorite games of all time. This is a game I think every gamer should try at least once. Not everyone loves it, but it definitely appeals to a broad audience. And that was Power Grid. Now, that's all we have for today's discussion on Next Step Train Games from Ticket to Ride. 